Good morning. Welcome to the Marysville Tulalip Chamber of Commerce Candidates Forum, number one. Today we have the incumbent, Senator June Robinson, joining us, and we also have the candidate, Bernard Moody. Serving as today's moderator is Peter Rudolph, a business attorney at Galloway Law Group. He is also on our Government Affairs Committee and currently serves as an ongoing respected member of our board of directors as legal counsel. Please join me in welcoming Peter and thank you for coming. Thank you, Jessica, and good morning. I'm pleased to introduce candidates for the 38th Legislative District. Bernard Moody, running for Republicans, and June Robinson, running for the Democrats. In each race, we will begin with a two minute opening statement by each candidate. To maintain the chamber's reputation of impartiality, the candidate to speak first for each race was chosen by a coin flip prior to the start of today's forum. Following opening statements, our candidates will be asked a series of questions developed by our government affairs committee. Alternating first response positions, each candidate will be given a two minute response period to the question posed. In the second segment, our candidates will pose their own question to their opponent. In this segment, each candidate will have one minute to pose their question and their challenger will have one minute to respond. In helping our candidates track their response times, we will signal when candidates have reached the one minute and 30 seconds remaining mark when their time is up. You'll see these notifications on the bottom of the Zoom window. And we'll move on to opening statements. You'll each have two minutes for your response. Bernard Moody, you go first. Hi, my name is Bernard Moody. I am running for Senate seat, uh, District 38. And I am running for the people of our district, as well as the people who are on either side of the divide as how they de identify themselves. Um, <clears throat> I have 38 years experience uh, working in the correction industry. I'm sorry, let me correct that. 32 years experience working in the correction industry. I currently work for the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office. I am a sergeant. I've been a sergeant for the last 13, 14 years now. In fact, I just had my anniversary in August. And um, it's been a very challenging and exciting career um, in public service. I started my career in service back in uh, 1977 when I joined the military as a Marine. Um, took the oath of office to serve and protect and defend our country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I've kind of lived up to that, um, that challenge, even though I haven't actively been in active duty. So um, I've always had that heart and it's been the foundation of all my public service. Um, I believe that our nation is the greatest nation in, on earth. I believe that through the principles and the foundations that we have that it created our nation, that we've created the most prosperous and the most enabled uh, nation for any people um, to be able to come and start um, in normal life as a, a, a everyday student and become the president of the United States. Um, I think we have the, the best opportunities in the world and that for, and therefore that's one of the reasons why I think most of the people of the world want to come to our nation. So um, I want to make it my effort, my heart to preserve what we had, to create it and to improve it, to, in, uh, to expand that umbrella so that hopefully someday we will be able to have a, a free and uh, enterprising world just like we have our country. Thank you. Uh, June Robinson, your opening statement. Thank you uh, for being here this morning. Uh, my name is June Robinson. I am currently the state senator for the 38th Legislative District, having been appointed to that position in May after the retirement of our longtime Senator John McCoy. Prior to being in the Senate, I served for seven years in the State House and um, most recently served as vice chair of appropriations for this other uh, house where I was involved directly in uh, uh, writing and operating our the uh, operating budget for the state. So I bring uh, deep experience in uh, budget writing, um, budget negotiations, healthcare policy um, to the state Senate um, where I look forward to 
using that experience as well as um, my life experience um, as to serve as your state senator. Um, I live in Everett, have raised two kids here who graduated from Everett Public Schools. Um, I have had a career in uh, health and human services prior to coming to the legislature. I've worked in community health, public health. I've done uh, work in affordable housing and homelessness. And I'm currently um, working with our local Snohomish Health District, um, helping to respond to the COVID crisis, which of course is the most critical issue facing us right now in the 38th and um, in our state. I feel like I have a good um, handle on the needs and uh, the uh, people, the, what people want here in our community. And I look forward to continuing to serve the people and address those needs in the best way possible. Thank you. Question number one, our first directed question. What matters most to you going into this next legislative session and how will this affect this budget in the session? June Robinson, your answer first. Well, as I said in my opening statement, um, the most critical issue address oh, that we need to um, address, uh, deal with at this time is the COVID pandemic that we are all experiencing. Um, the result of this pandemic is not only health related, we've had many people um, ill, many deaths, unfortunately over 200 deaths in Snohomish County due to COVID, um, but it's also caused a significant economic downturn. Um, and so therefore the state has less revenue to work with. Um, while we all want to get back to normal, we want our businesses to reopen, we want to be able to go about our lives as we did pre-COVID, um, that just is not going to happen until we get a handle on the public health issue. Um, so what will I do? Um, I will make sure that we're investing in um, our state Department of Health and local public health's um, response to the pandemic. I know that um, there will be many calls uh, for economic recovery and we absolutely need to keep our eye on that and invest in what we can for economic recovery as well. However, until we get the pandemic under control, we will not really have economic recovery. Um, right here in Everett, we are, uh, and in the 38th, we're really um, hoping that we don't lose the 787 line at Boeing which will be devastating um, to our local economy. However, um, the fact is until people feel safe getting back on airplanes and flying, uh, Boeing is not gonna be able to sell airplanes. So it all comes back to making sure that we invest in a public health response, get the COVID uh, crisis under control, and simultaneously address uh, the economic issues that are facing us. Thank you, June. Bernard, same question. Um, most important session. Um, well, the most important thing for me right now is to um, get elected and to get down there to be able to make an impact. Um, I think the most uh, top priorities that um, I believe is forming, they're constantly changing because of the, you know, the problems that we had when we, from the start of the, the election to what's happened and transpired uh, since the, um, the cycle started. But um, most importantly is public safety. Um, I've, I've been in public safety all, if not um, most of my life and definitely all of my professional career with working uh, as a corrections professional. Um, <clears throat> I've been able to understand a little bit of behind the scenes look of uh, the criminal mind, the, the addicted, the homeless, and I believe I could be able to bring a, a fresh perspective to, uh, to the table of ideas. Um, I believe also the most important thing that we will need to do as a legislative body is to get our people back to work. I believe our country works best when the people are working. And then the recovery that therefore would follow from that. Um, we've had the greatest economy uh, experience uh, before the uh, emergency happened. And I believe that we will be able to get back to that 
uh, very quickly. And I think it would be very appropriate for us to do whatever we can as legislators to get our, um, our state and our district back to work and back on track for that recovery. Uh, happy that both of you have brought up the COVID-19 since that happens to be one of the next questions we have. Uh, what is your opinion, each of you, on the matter of reopening from COVID-19? And what and how will you support our community in order to lessen the impact, especially regarding the impact on businesses and families who are facing unprecedented educational challenges due to this crisis? Uh, Bernard, you go first this time. Um, well, you know, the, as, as uh, June has said, that the pandemic has just pretty much created its own universe. We have to deal with it. And until we can um, get rid of it, deal with whatever we need to deal with in order to live with it or to be able to move on from it, um, I think everything we do is just going to be uh, focused on getting that back on track. I think the people that I've spoken with in the district since I've been campaigning is as well as the people that I work with uh, that happen to be in the jail. And uh, we're essential workers. And so we've not had the luxury of being able to go on furloughs or be able to take time off. We've had to go in there and, um, and report in for duty, regardless of the dangers and the threats. Um, <clears throat> so I think um, going into this, we're probably gonna have to try to find a way that we'll be able to do like June said, keep our uh, jobs going and focus on the economy as well as to create the, um, uh, the prosperity that we, we've came from and uh, be able to do it all safely because people not being able to go to work is not gonna necessarily be very good for our economy. Um, I think the possibilities of uh, June's got the experience uh, in, the, in the healthcare interests and not at the risk of sounding like I'm propping her up. Um, she's very, you know, she's got uh, that, that knowledge on the healthcare side of it that I don't have, but I have a little bit of an insight on the other side of it about the, um, you know, the homeless and the addicted and how the COVID has affected them. Fortunately, um, we have homeless camps almost uh, literally in the sidewalks as I go in and out of uh, work, and uh, they're not dead. They're not dying, and they are seeming to thrive, and so I take that as a good sign and as a good indicator because, you know, they're not doing social distancing, you know, living out there in, those, in the camps that they are, and neither are they practicing, you know, safe hygiene, but um, at the same time, I think we need to uh, uh, to continue to educate them and to be able to keep them from being uh, sick or getting sick and keeping themselves safe. So I think that as we move forward, we'll be able to move uh, in a direction that's going to be best uh, suitable for all of our citizens. Thank you, Bernard. June, same question. Yes, thank you. Um, well, we need to continue to gradually open up um, and do it in as safe a manner as possible, which is what we have been doing um, as a state and as a community since the um, really strict lockdown back in um, April and May. Um, <clears throat> right now, we are in a fairly good place. I wouldn't say we're, it's great, but um, we're certainly in a more positive space in Snohomish County where um, positive cases are trending downward. We hope that continues. Um, and that's the result of people wearing masks, social distancing, and taking as many safety precautions as possible as they go back to work. Schools and opening schools has been honestly the most challenging um, uh, um, situation, uh, decision of this whole pandemic. Um, I am very grateful that I do not have school age children. I will be the first to admit that. I think, you know, having kids at home, trying to learn and teach and um, get educated is extremely challenging and not what anyone wants. Um, however, if we sent kids and teachers back into schools now at just, you know, the way it was before COVID, there would be, we know that there would be fairly significant transmission of the virus. We have to acknowledge that some of those kids live in homes where there are high risk adults living. Some teachers um, have health conditions that put them in a high risk category. So it's not fair for the broad community um, for that to happen. 
but we need to be able to take steps. And I think that's gradually happening where we bring back, you know, small groups of kids at a time. We're starting to see that in some of our schools. That will continue as long as transmission stays low. What we just need to keep doing is what everybody I know is tired of, and that is social distancing, make sure your group of uh, contacts is small and wear a mask and wash your hands. Thank you. Uh, question number three. What are the 38th district priorities for economic development? And how do you believe these priorities will impact this budget session? June, you start first. Yeah, well, um, I mean, the 38th legislative district it continues to be, in terms of the economy, continues to be very dependent on aerospace as we have been for, for several decades. Um, so, we need to do all that we can, although quite frankly, the legislature doesn't have a lot of tools left um, to ensure that um, Boeing stays here and keeps jobs here in the, um, in the district. At Boeing's request, we uh, repealed um, the latest tax incentive that we had provided for them because of the, the WTO ruling. Um, so again, that was at their request that we did that. Um, so we don't have that option really in our toolbox anymore. Um, we have to rely on worker training and uh, making sure that we have a community that um, is ready to go to work and um, build airplanes. But we do have a large supply, aerospace supplier community. We have um, space, uh, additional um, industrial space, especially in the northern, in the Marysville area, um, to continue to attract additional um, employers. And, you know, there are many industries, biotech, for example, which is sort of based in Bothell, but starting to come north uh, to Everett and Marysville that we need to continue to work on. Um, we have a strong healthcare industry here, which we need to uh, continue to support and grow. So basically the overall economic uh, development philosophy mine is support the jobs that we have and um, continue to look for ways to um, uh, make this a community that employers want to come to and, and grow jobs here. Thank you, June. Bernard, same question. Well, June's actively serving in that in that capacity, so she's definitely got the experience and the uh, the more insight knowledge on that. Um, uh, I could agree with almost everything that she has uh, recited as far as um, the, the cooperation that you know that we would need to maintain our jobs. However, I would kind of add just a couple of things that I think that has been part of the uh, my overall idea of what we could do to do better. And, um, and I think one of the things that in the face of uh, decreasing jobs is that we might take the opportunity to start increasing some of the education opportunities into the high tech areas and trying to get some of those jobs up here in the absence of the ones that are leaving. Um, I think um, one, of the, one of the most important um, um, parts that I would like to work on if I was uh, able to, if I had a magic wand would be uh, creating some trade schools and try to get into some programs that would actually allow people to learn how to do the types of jobs that we want them to do without having to occur the financial debt that many of them have to occur when they go to the, you know, the universities and the colleges and they end up coming in the workforce with, you know, several hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Um, I believe that trade schools have uh, been the founding foundation of our uh, nation as how we got into where we are because pretty much, that's pretty much how we actually created the industry, industries that we have. Um, I think um, the new space contracts that I heard that we just uh, been awarded up in uh, I believe Skagit County and some of the com uh, companies up there or either even in um, Arlington where they're gonna be opening up some new opportunities for uh, people in our district. So I think it would be it would be very good if we could stop preparing the people for some of the opportunities that are coming down the road. And uh, by doing that, I think we would be able to uh, stay um, at least in competition with some of the other uh, states as uh, far as the industries that keep them thriving and it will keep us thriving at the same time and give our people the education that we need to be able to be successful. 
Thank you. Now each candidate will be given the opportunity to pose a one minute question to their opponent and the candidate's opponent will then have one minute to answer or respond to that question. Uh, Bernard, you ask your question first and then June will respond, followed by June asking a question without pause and then Bernard can respond. So Bernard. Again, I'm asking my question, June, as a citizen of uh, the 38th and um, I wanted to know in the light of our current um, increase of activities where it comes to violence and uh, protests and all of the problems that, and the mayhem that comes from it, as a citizen, I'm kind of concerned about the safety and especially with all this talk of defund the police and this ever increasing uh, uh, desire for tyranny to seem to take, you know, with Portland having, you know, the chaos that's going down in there. What, um, what can you do as a senator and as a citizen to diminish that from happening up here and so that Everett doesn't get turned into another Seattle uh, because quite honestly, I really love my city and uh, I want to keep it safe. And so I'm kind of concerned about that. So I kind of wonder what you would do or could do about it. Well, thank you for that question. Um, and yes, I love Everett and Marysville too. Um, I think peaceful protests are part of what this uh, country is founded on. I think it's really important that we don't discourage and allow um, peaceful protests for people on, on, with any viewpoint to be able to express that view in a public way. Um, that's what brings change in whatever direction um, we happen to go um, in our country, or it's one of the things that brings change. I just think that's a really important vehicle. Um, the criminal activity that we've seen happen um, with some of those protests is wrong. It's criminal. It needs to be uh, dealt with as criminal activity. Um, I don't know, besides um, supporting Washington State Patrol and, um, <clears throat> in, and supporting training for police, um, a lot of these decisions are made at the local level. Uh, so there's not a lot um, that the state legislature can do the, uh, that determines the way that Everett would respond to protesters, for example. Junior question. Yeah, I would uh, like to ask a similar question to uh, Bernard. You are part of law enforcement and I'd like to know uh, police reform um, will be a big part of the agenda in Olympia this coming session. And so I'd like to know how you see yourself contributing to that conversation. Good question. And I'm glad you asked it because that's probably my, my heart's throb. Um, you know, one of the things that Sonoma County doesn't seem to get any credit for is that we have been designated and recognized by the state of Washington by getting certified um, in their program uh, for the very things that they're asking people to do in law enforcement, that is get better training, get uh, better education, to be able to deal with, uh, you know, the stresses of the job and how to, you know, how to respond in an appropriate manner. I think this, I think our, uh, the Stomach County Sheriff's Office has been one of the leaders in that, uh, in that effort, too much, so much so that we have actually been having agencies come to us asking us for advice and how that we were able to spearhead what we were able to do. Uh, one of the things that we have done in our, that gave us national leadership is uh, our PREA program, which is the Prison Rape Elimination Act. That has been something we've instituted in our, um, our jail for the last several years and uh, it's going nationwide. And it's one of those things that we've been able to reduce, you know, that type of tragedy and those types of problems. Um, I think being a law enforcement officer myself or being in the field, I think we really need to reassure and, and strengthen our law enforcement because from that strength, we get to have the strength and safety in order to provide for the community. Because with no law enforcement, recklessness and crime is going to go unanswered and that we cannot have. Thank you both very much for meeting with us in this virtual candidate forum. Our goal today is to present a fair and impartial format that will aid citizens in their decision-making process. Your vote is extremely important. Weigh your choices carefully and please remember to vote 
before November 3rd. Thank you, Peter, and a special thank you for moderating today. A couple other thank yous we'd like to give from the Chamber are to the candidates. Best of luck to you both. To our Government Affairs Committee for all the work they put in on getting this prepared on behalf of the businesses in the Marysville, Tulalip area. And thank you to 564IT for helping edit and prepare this video for you today. For our upcoming events, we've got tomorrow morning's Candidates Forum number two which will be covering the 44th Legislative District for the House of Representatives seat number two, which are candidates Mark James and April Berg. Thank you for coming and have a great day.